I'm doing a review for this book. It's The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark. I first read this book when I was in secondary school and I have very fond memories of it. I may love reading nowadays, but when I was younger, I certainly wasn't very keen on reading. It was boring and I had TV to watch. I remember starting this book one day and I couldn't put it down. I'd finished reading it within a day and that was very unlike me. So I've always remembered this book as, oh, that's the book I enjoyed reading. The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie is a story about a collection of girls and their eccentric teacher. Miss Jean Brodie decides to take these girls under her wing. She is in her prime and they will receive the benefit of her influence. As well as substituting their scheduled lessons for her own lessons in life, Miss Brodie has decided to give her set of girls extracurricular attention, to mould them with her superior knowledge and to produce in them the creme de la creme. Miss Brodie tells her girls about the love affairs of her youth. She talks to them about her travels, about art, and about the correct way to organise society. As the girls get older, Jean Brodie attempts to use the girls like pawns in her own power struggles. One of the girls has enough of this and gives the school headmistress information which gets Miss Brodie the sack. Jean Brodie never quite gets over this betrayal by one of her girls and she doesn't find out which one it was that betrayed her. The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie is set in the 1930s, just before the Second World War, and that seems to add an innocence to the story. Miss Brodie naively hails the great organisational skills of Mussolini and Hitler. Miss Brodie is incorrect about numerous things, but people don't love her for her correctness. They love her because of her proud and beautiful incorrectness. As the girls get older and into their mid-teens, there is a strange love web that occurs when Miss Jean Brodie does not enter into a love affair with Teddy Lloyd, the art teacher. As if to console herself against the loss of her true love, Miss Brodie enters into a relationship with the music teacher instead. Miss Brodie then encourages her girls to pose for Teddy Lloyd as he produces portrait after portrait of them in which they all look like Miss Brodie. Miss Brodie lives vicariously through her girls and is perversely triumphant when one of them conducts an affair with Mr Lloyd. Whilst Miss Brodie's heart is with Mr Lloyd and her girls, she eventually loses the affections of the art teacher who cannot make do with being purely fed on food alone. Predominantly, the story is told from the point of view of Sandy, although not always, and the book skits around as it goes on and shows glimpses of the girls when they are grown women. Throughout the book, Spark has a lovely, warm, humorous and nostalgic writing style. Even when I read this book as a teenager, it seemed to remind me of a childhood I never had. I enjoyed reading this book again, it handles more adult themes than I remember. There is also a lovely atmosphere in it of the innocence of youth, such as thinking that sex equals pregnancy, as well as the girl's blind faith in the information an adult is giving them. What Jean, what Jean Brodie gives her girls is not necessarily the information that she is imparting, but the steely resolve with which she lives her life. Sandy may well be the main beneficiary of that gift. This book is a great read and would appeal to young and grown adults alike. I liked that so many of the characters are women and there are no soppy love stories or girls being adventurers like boys or any of that stereotypical crap. It's girls and women being girls and women in all their own bizarrety. Okay, here it is again. 
Okay, and the next book I'm planning to read is this absolute mammoth, which is Caesar and Christ by Will Durant. Um, so long as I can keep it checked out of the library long enough to finish it. Okay, thank you all.